everyone welcome to this week's youtube video this week we're going to go over a quick fast fun way of painting green skin the model that i'm going to be using is a bust called tuk tuk from alchemist painting this model is available on kickstarter at the moment so feel free to check out the link in the description i'm not getting a kickback for this i'm not being sponsored it's just a cool model that i thought i'd share with you guys as always if you want to support the channel feel free to check out all the links in the description below for my twitch patreon all that sort of stuff and if the video is helpful if you do like it don't forget to hit that like button because it means a huge amount here we go so to start off the colors that we're going to need for this are vallejo model color black vallejo model color white but any black and white will do whatever's your poison is fine the first color that we're going to use for the green is p3 isan green and then we're going to be using p3 cygnus yellow we will also be using a bit of games workshop rhinox hide and a bit of vallejo model color violet but ultimately any ready brown will get you a nice result and any fairly desaturated purple will also work as well so straight away we want to base coat the whole of the model now when it comes to skin especially skin this large and animal skin texture is a really useful tool so what that means is we can have a lot of fun with this we don't need super smooth transitions so what I've done is base coated this model with a rather large cheap makeup brush that I got from Poundland paint is thinned down to maybe three or four parts paint to one part water so it's got a very very small amount of paint uh, very very small amount of water in the paint the idea is i want this paint to stay wet on the model and then what i can do is add more and more yellow to the isan green and mix it on the model while this paint is while this paint is still wet so you can see what I just did there with the makeup brush. I grabbed the Cygnus yellow, slapped it on the areas that I wanted that bright, brighter highlight and I wanted more life. And basically what I did is I then with that same paintbrush, I dabbed it. I st almost like stippled it together. So and you can see here what I've done is I've actually added a little bit of blue here. I don't actually need this. I wish I hadn't used it, but just in case you're curious, it's Vallejo model color dark Prussian blue. The idea with this is, is what I'm doing is I'm jumping between these colors where I want it brighter. I'll grab yellow paint and I'll dab this paint on a bit like a hybrid between a dry brush motion and stippling. And I'm mixing this paint together on the model with this big brush. And I'm trying to find like just the overall shapes, just the large shapes for this model. Now, what I would say is don't put too much paint on your brush. So when you pick the paint up, with your paintbrush just remove the excess so you don't put massive blobs on because you'll obscure the details but the idea with it is as i said is you just want to get this paint on the model so it's relatively uh, it covers relatively well make sure and the the ideal consistency here is you want the paint to be as opaque as possible and you don't want it to dry very quickly now you can see under the neck what I did there is this is this is the Games Workshop Rhinox hide and where this where we place this Rhinox hide on the model it starts mixing with the green and you start getting this ready muddier tone so this works really nice for the shadow color and I'd like to point out this this color scheme will work for everything it will work for 28 millimeter orcs it will work for 54 mil it'll work for 75 mil I've used this color scheme before so it works on everything Generally, what I would say to you, though, the smaller the scale, the smaller the brush. But you can still use small makeup brushes to do this on smaller scale models. The benefit of this is, is what it does is it starts very early to create a like a rough texture on your model. So what you'll have is you'll have lots of imperfections in your in your paintwork and that will sell the result of like a, of, of like a rough animal skin. So that works really well. And you can see what I'm doing here. I've slapped that yellow down next to the green and then I'm dabbing that paintbrush so it mixes it together. This is a fun process. I can't stress this enough. This is something that you should just be enjoying. And if you wanted to, you can get a really, really high quality result with this as well, as long as you're willing to do the additional refinement that comes with it. Now, the next part is the yellow is very vibrant and what I want to do is the yellow is kind of like the, the brighter area of the skin but I'm putting some white into this now as well because what I want to have is those shine spots where the light is really hitting it so 
I've slapped on big blobs of white and then around that white I've gone back with that yellow and what we're, what ends up happening is we end up with this more desaturated tone to the skin which is quite nice so the benefit of this sort of process is it's very fluid you can keep adjusting what you have on the model at all times if you end up having the skin so it's not if you lose a lot of the green for example it's very easy just to get more green on your brush and mix it in so this is why this is a fun process because the whole idea with this is is we are mixing this paint on the model we're using a massive brush and we're just playing with the shapes as long as you don't have like massive blobs thick blobs of paint on your brush you can't really go wrong if you're worried about obscuring details when you're doing this i understand that i've never particularly had an issue with it but i do understand that can be a problem all you need to do is have a second brush next to you and when you're painting it if you see that you've got a big puddle somewhere all you need to do is just get that dry paintbrush put a little bit of water on and then absorb up that blob of paint that's obscuring the details you can see with this that I've just brought all the yellow back. So basically what I wanted is I wanted a more dirty red tone in the shadows. And then I wanted that nice vibrant yellow to come back. So I never, with this particular model, because it's a bust, I had the luxury of not particularly worrying about matching another color, another scheme, because I'm only going to be doing one of them. So I got to play around quite a lot with it. So if you're doing this for multiple models, obviously you might want to be a bit more structured with it. But when it comes to skin, you've got a lot of variation, especially when you're doing something like an orc army or something like that. Painting in this way is really, really strong because what you can do is you can get lots of very subtle differences in the tones of what you're painting. And that can make things really interesting. And it can mean that your orcs don't all look exactly the same. You'll have lots of variations in skin. But again, as I said, just use a smaller brush. The idea is the paint is the paint is wet on the model and you're mixing that paint together. Now, in this case, you can see me using my thumb as well. I wouldn't recommend this unless you're used to doing it, but ultimately I'm blending that with my thumb. Now, I've skipped ahead a little bit. All I've done is I've painted the eye and I've painted the base colors for all the other details. So I haven't done anything else. The skin is exactly the same as it was previously. Now all we're going to do is I've got a smaller brush. The brush is still knackered, to be honest with you. This brush is not in a particularly good condition at all. And I'm starting to define the shapes a little bit more. So that area under the eye, I've come back with that brighter green. The lip, because it protrudes a little bit. So I'm just picking out the features and the shapes that I want for this model. So I want the lip to stand out. That area under the eye. That should receive a little bit more light so i'm making it brighter so i'm adding these interest points to make the face stand out a lot more now what i would recommend like i always talk about roadmaps take a picture of the model beforehand under the light that you want although that does have its downsides it will give you a rough idea on where to place your highlights and it can be used for absolutely everything but in this case the, the priority is is mostly the top of the head mouth and just under the eye that's where we're going to have have those bright spots um, i am going to add some deeper shadows shortly as well you can also really see the condition of the brush here it's really quite poor with this these highlights that i've just done i've added a small amount of white so the closer we get to those really bright points i'm adding small amounts of white to it to imitate like a shine effect and again, I'm using, you can see how, how broken up that brush is. It's just lots and lots of like messed up bristles. That's the point with this. The paint is thinned down to maybe one part water to one part paint. I'm removing the excess paint from the brush, much like you would a dry brush. Um, and then all I'm doing is with this broken up brush, I'm stippling over the areas that I want to either darken down or brighten up and this gives us that really nice worn um, textured skin surface which is really good for green skins lastly what i want to do is push the shadow under the nose what this is going to do and especially under the, the eye as well what this will do is if we push the shadows it will make those bright areas on the face look even brighter so it will make it even more striking so in this case what i've done 
is I started adding a little bit of black to the green, but I found that to be really boring, to be honest with you. It was very flat. So what I ended up doing was adding some purple to it. So I added some Vallejo model color purple to the green. And what I ended up getting was something far more interesting. I got this like variation, like I got this quite warm shadow color by adding the purple to the green. And I quite like that, which is what you can see me doing here. Now what happens is, is it kind of goes a little bit gray when we put it over the green and that's absolutely fine. So once we put that purple in, what we do is work over it with the green again that we've been using previously and it gives us a far warmer shadow color and it makes it pop much much more and you can see as well like the whole time that i'm doing this i'm not using a, a good brush i'm not using a detailed brush this is really is a very simple fun process like i can't stress that enough i'm not really doing any detail work when I want a little bit more control, I'm using that exact same brush, but I'm, I'm restoring the brush more to a point, although it's not a particularly good one. And then I'm stippling over just like I have been, but I'm doing it with one point instead of lots of them, like I did with the knackered brush. So this model, this paint scheme really is an exercise in stippling with lots of different brushes and different paint consistencies just to build up this material texture. So it's something that I'd really recommend that you experiment with because you can get some amazing results with this and it's quite a lot of fun, especially when, especially if we paint, when we're painting miniatures normally where everything's so detailed and we end up spending so much time and focus trying to get the volumes correct. Doing something like this is a real palette cleanser and it can be great fun. And that's why I wanted to do a video on Tuk Tuk because I didn't spend a lot of time on this model. I painted this model from start to finish in about six hours. Um, and truthfully, it was probably one of the most enjoyable models that I've painted because it's so simple and it's got such awesome, like such great uh, different material textures and you can spend as much time as you want on it. This is the last bit now. So I've gone back with the yellow and the white and I'm just changing this shape on the nose so it fits better. So the idea is that the shape on the nose, the highlight, that's going to be more circular and just towards along the top of the head where we go just from that bright spot on the nose across to the eye, and brightening up all of that area as well. And that's it. That's how I painted the skin on Tuk Tuk. So Vallejo model color black, Vallejo model color white, P3 ISN green, P3 Cygnus yellow. I did put some Vallejo model color dark Prussian blue in there as well, but you really don't need it. And in hindsight, I just wouldn't have bothered. Um, but Games Workshop Rhinox hide and Vallejo model color violet. I would not recommend that you use good brushes if you're going to try something like this because you will absolutely destroy them. Genuinely, this is a fun process for painting I'd highly recommend that you try it it's actually very versatile and very useful especially when we talk about display painting it's got a lot of uses but as always I hope it's been helpful let me know what you think in the comments and catch you later